thank you very much for continuing the extraordinary tradition of this hearing. We deeply appreciate the courtesy. Our two highest priorities on our issue paper in general are to expand access and improve the nutritional content of the meals and the environment of the local school. First, we have several suggestions to expand access. We recommend that direct certification and direct verification be a high priority that you continue to expand its use for child nutrition. We recommend the statute be amended to allow for community eligibility in high poverty areas so that children do not have to individually fill out the applications. The Hunger Free Schools Act, H.R. 4148, has a provision that embraces this concept. We support expansion of the summer food service program and the after school child care program. We support the Healthy Start Act introduced by Representatives Stephanie Herseth Sandlin and Joanne Emerson to provide five cents in USDA commodities per meal for the school breakfast program, and that is H.R. 4638. We urge the Congress to expand the free meal program gradually over time to make the income guidelines consistent with the income guideline in the WIC program. H.R. 3705 has been introduced to do this, and we support that approach. Finally, we ask that you close a major loophole in the statute which allows funds that you appropriate for school meals to be used for expenses unrelated to providing those school meals. There is no provision in the statute or in the regulations that govern what expenses can be re reimbursed in, with this funding. Furthermore, when a charge is made that we believe to be inappropriate, there is no recourse. There is no appeal pro process to USDA. Our suggested amendment is written in the testimony. Second, with regard to nutrition integrity, we have a few suggestions. SNA, in partnership with the First Lady Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign, has committed to further improving healthy school meals and advancing nutrition education for Americans' children. I encourage you to go to our website uh, to learn more about that partnership on the First Lady's Let's Move campaign. We urge the committee to increase the reimbursement in all meal categories. We urge you to also amend the statute and require the secretary to establish a consistent national application of the most recent dietary guidelines for all meals reimbursed by the Department of Agriculture. The current statute is defective in two important respects. First, it requires meals to be consistent with the goals of the dietary guidelines. That is not specific enough. The meals must be consistent with the guidelines, not just the goals of the guidelines. Second, someone must be in charge of deciding if the meals are, in fact, consistent with the guidelines. That responsibility must rest with the secretary. If every state and local community can decide if they are meeting the guidelines, then there is no standard at all. Children need the same nutrients regardless of where they live. It is basic science. The country is spending a lot of money to develop the IOM report and to craft the dietary guidelines. They should be followed consistently. The time has clearly come to end the so-called time and place rule and give the secretary the authority needed to regulate the nutritional quality of all foods and beverages sold on the school campus during the school day. The secretary should be required to promulgate regulations to guarantee that all foods and beverages sold in schools are consistent with the most recent edition of the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, taking into consideration the recommendations of the Institute of Medicine and SNA's recommendation for national nutrition standards. While it is mostly a matter of science, let me also mention that the current multiplicity of nutrition standards across the country is driving up the cost of the program. The more product specifications that exist in the school market, the higher the cost of production and the cost of the program. Again, our specific amendment with regard to consistency is included in our written testimony. We must finally establish an effective nutrition education program in the school. Chairman Miller, members of the committee, thank you again for continuing this special tradition. We pledge to work closely with the majority and the minority to craft a reauthorization bill that is both faithful to our children and responsive to the deficit. I would be pleased to answer any questions that you may have.